Hi there, my name is Natalie and today I'm joined with James Matthews, who is the CEO of Ocado Technology. James, lovely to see you. Great to be here. Thank you so much for joining us in this new video conferencing world. This is new for me. I don't know if it is for you, but I'm certainly getting used to this way of chatting and connecting. I was just saying that in a weird way, speaking in a public audience in person is really less nerve wracking than this, this setup. This is all new to all of us, but no, it's, uh, it's great. Isn't it works. It? So to, to kick us off, uh, can you give us an overview of your business and how it's been impacted by the global health situation? Sure. So to give you a quick overview of Ocado, it's a slightly um, complex business, but to give you a bit of our history. So we started as a, an online food retailer, uh, an original dot-com boom web 1.0 retailer in the um, early 2000s. Um, and that, that was um, uh, our business for most of our history. Um, but over the last few years, we have uh, learned that the technologies that we developed to power our online business are applicable to other retailers around the world. And that as other supermarkets go through their digital transformations, move online, et cetera, that we have um, a, a great end-to-end -end platform that we can offer to them. And so sitting here today, Ocado essentially has got three business models. Um, we still own half of the retail business that we started. We have a joint venture um, uh, with another business in the UK. We have a logistics business where we um, employ a five-figure amount of frontline workers, drivers, people who work in our warehouses, etc. And then we have a global technology business um, which sells um, technology, intellectual property, know-how to now nine retailers around the world, um, helping them launch their businesses. Um, and each of those three businesses has been affected in different ways by the uh, by the current crisis. So. Our, our retail business, the demand has gone through the roof. Um, you know, it makes sense that the, the, the ability to get food delivered directly to your home without having to venture out is um, you know, incredibly powerful at the moment. And so there we've been um, coping, I think, admirably growing our business uh, incredibly rapidly in the circumstances, but we still have a multiple of the amount of demand that we can uh, possibly fulfill. In our logistics business, then we've got all of the uh many many changes that we've had to make to account for people working in a safe way so whether that is cleaning regimes of vans that is the on-site testing uh, temperature checking safe distance at work to allow people to get food in people's homes in a safe way so that's been a huge effect there and for our global technology business um there it, it's been a uh, a recognition amongst our clients or prospective clients our investors that the shift to getting food delivered online is it was already there but it's going to accelerate um, and so in terms of how people are looking at our technology business, they see that the opportunity is, is bigger now in the shorter term than we you know, imagined it was previously. Absolutely. And, and to confirm, you, you are the, James, you're the CEO of the Ocado technology side of those three parts of the business that you explain. Yeah. So I have about 2,000 people in Ocado technology who are developing the platforms that power all three of those previous businesses. So the power our own retail business, power our own warehouses and et cetera in the UK. But then I think most importantly in terms of our overall story, power uh, you know, the global uh, technology platform that we um, we provide. And it, it's worth adding for further context that technology in Ocado's terms is a very wide ranging definition. So in Ocado technology, we have people who are um, you know, designing steel girders to support physical warehouses in seismic activity mechanical engineers, robotics, as well as software, you know, sort of te technology is it's you know, most commonly talked about. Um, and so it's, it's a, a broad end-to-end -end platform that we're developing. How do you think your future plans have changed in light of the situation in recent months? So the core of what we do is remain the same. And so to, to some extent, the current crisis sort of affirmed the path that we are on and has highlighted the extent of the opportunity there. And so there's there, in our line of business, I don't think there's been a big shift of the, the core product we're building is not the right one. We need to adjust it for the new world. Um, it, we were in the situation where we had the right product for the new world, as it were, in, in uh, the current context. Well, I think what it has done is it, it's definitely made us look at our um, priorities in terms of we, we have our fingers in many pies, investing in lots of technologies in lots of, in lots of spaces, some of which um, you know, are uh, well outside of the uh, grocery um, online model. And so there's clearly just huge amounts of opportunity. So as, as the opportunity grows, 
we now have to sort of reassess, oh, is that bigger than we thought? Do we need to put more investments in there? And, and we're, quite, we're quite lucky in that we are in investment mode, right? And so this really has just accelerated how we think about how quickly we can bring some new products to our customers. Um, we can have a bit more confidence investing now because as I, as I was saying, you know, everyone, all our key stakeholders and shareholders clearly believe that the opportunity is, um, is accelerating. So what does this mean from a digital transformation projects perspective? In my 15 years at Carlo, I'm not aware of a project that we've done under the guise of digital transformation to the extent that we were sort of digital first online only business. Part of the DNA from the start. Um, but, where, but where it's incredibly relevant is the digital transformation that our clients are undertaking. And so we are um, sort of a provider in some absolutely enormous, you know, think tens of billions of dollars um, of expenditure, digital transformation products on, on part of some of the world's biggest um, retailers. And um, for, for those projects, what we've, and it's, it's early days, right? Everyone is assessing, is the new normal temporary? Is it gonna, is it gonna last a long time? What exactly when we return to things does it look like? And our clients are going through those same thought processes. But in general, the projects they had undergoing with us, um, they were, on average, previously cautious and um, wanted to see a gradual rollout and were quite relaxed about seeing a gradual move over. But is now in their home markets, the demand for the services that our platform enables, you know, getting food into people's um, uh, kitchens oh. online is accelerating. And so what we can see quite rapidly is that each of those clients is more interested in going faster, um, uh, looking at what they're going to invest. and so. For those digital transformation products, I think it's going to have a, um, uh, a very real effect that will play out over the coming you know, months and years. For Ocado, I, I don't think it, it has the same. I think, um, you know, as I was saying before, we, we happen to have a model that now you know, fits quite well with um, the way the world is, is changing. And so it's really it's more of the same in an acceleration of that. We've heard a lot from customers across various industries that there will be this new normal, um, new customer behaviours dictating new business practices, new ways of working. Have you begun thinking about what this new normal will look like for your industry and your company? So kind of a combination of the two. Yeah, so I think it's fair to summarise that whatever is going to happen, it's clearly playing out over a longer Time frame than perhaps people thought at the beginning of the crisis, as it were. Um, and um, even if the world develops um, uh, a vaccine or some big um, uh, silver bullet solution to this, it's still going to have a behavioral impact on the way that people um, approach their life, as it were. And it's highly likely that some of the consumer behaviors that are happening now just become embedded, as it were. And mm. I think in general, this is most applicable in industries that were already undergoing a transformation and it and this has now represented an acceleration and so i mean you can use other examples um industries nothing to do with what i do so if you take sort of digital streaming of of uh, movies clearly that was an enormous thing that was happening anyway right that was a transformation mm -hmm. that was ongoing however the uh the movie theater the cinema chain still had the premiere as it was still a big part of that um that ecosystem the current crisis has just has accelerated that move to digital only. And even if the crisis is resolved, it's hard to say, will it, will it roll back to it? Well, I think probably not. And I think you know, parallel to that in the industry that I'm in, um, it I very much hope will be the case that we'll all be you know, much freer to go about our daily lives um, in the future and going to a shop will not um, you know, uh, come with a sense of fear anymore. However, mm -hmm. the behaviors that people have picked up um, during these months, and it could be many more months to come, I think will represent a permanent acceleration of people moving to digital services. And so, uh, you know, I mean, to my earlier points, that hasn't led us to uh, think that we need to, you know, invent any new products and services. We felt like we were, you know, building the right core platform, as it were. Um, but whatever the new normal is, we anticipate that it's going to, you know, have a heavier reliance on the kind, kind of services that we, we provide. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And I think, you know, you mentioned about, behavioral changes and I think you're absolutely right we 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 can focus on that that kind of technology change but you're you're right it really is this you know core 
focus on the user and you know how how are people and how are our users interacting with our technology how is that changing and then of course like you said an opportunity for us to move even faster in a lot of industries um and accelerate those digital transformation projects even quicker as opposed to you know potentially putting them on the back burner so that that's that's great news um, so the next, it actually leads really well into my next question, um, is have your plans to pursue ambitious uh, projects changed? Um, have they been delayed or cancelled? Or has the situation brought to life um, e- even more reason for 10x thinking and innovation? We are fortunate to be in that latter camp where, um, yeah, from a business perspective, the situation has is accelerating, not causing us to um, you know, have to face um, cutting back on things. Um, and so, some of the products that we have lined up and had lined up anyway, but we now really want to look to accelerate are things like um, our robotic picking um, products. So, just explain a bit of context. One of one of the parts of our platform are um, automated warehouses um, that have robots running around, uh, picking up food, bringing them, but ultimately bringing them um, to a human who then picks and packs groceries, as it were. Um, we now have live in a, in a small way um, in our own operations, uh, robotic picking cells that do the final part of the um, process. So actually oh, wow. um, pick up the yogurt, put it in the customer's order. Um, and we have a lot of teams working on this and we have teams working potentially years out on innovations. And so whether this is on the physical side of things, the sort of um, end effectors on the robot arm, we've got sort of version one in play now, we've got three future um, iterations um, being worked on in parallel, as well as the core of the magic, really, which is the vision systems and the artificial intelligence that power um, power the uh, picking process. We we were already working on it, but we are we just intend to accelerate that significantly because um, you know it goes without saying that in a in an environment where um, you might be worried about uh, social distancing and say some of these mm-hmm. um, uh, automation. Uh, products and techniques will only enhance things and you know our clients are going to be more interested in now than they than they were previously on top of the efficiency that obviously inherently comes from from this sort of automation automation. so yeah so we're lucky to be in that in that latter camp of how do we double down on some of this innovation rather than think about thinking about things to, to cut yeah well you um james you started off by saying that you couldn't see into the future but from hearing what you've just said then, it sounds like you absolutely, you're creating the future um, in in terms of this space. So um, really interesting to see how you're using applied machine learning and, and vision to optimise uh, process. Extremely interesting. So from a technology perspective, customers tell us infrastructure, agile dev, uh, and data are all key to moving fast and responding to change. Where will you focus your e- efforts at Acado Technology in the coming months to build your technology capabilities and platforms in your space to remain agile? So, I think in the last few, in the last couple of months, we've we've undergone a, a huge change in how we work um, uh, as a business now obviously different organizations are on uh, we're already on different trajectories in terms of things like remote working and flexible working etc we had an incredibly office-based culture you know the, the vast vast majority of all our technology was built by teams in person um, and you know we've obviously now undergone and I've been you know incredibly pleased at the the rate that we've um, adapted um, and we're, we're carrying on as we've as we were. However, it's brought to light our need to do more and more remotely, not just in terms of getting technology built, but in terms of operating our platform. Of course. Um, and so, and that causes us ultimately to invest in more technology, as it were, to help uh, be efficient. And this actually, as it, all of this stuff will be good for the long term, actually, regardless of if we all return to the office. And so, you know, a good example um, we've got is that we have robotic uh analytics about big sort of hive uh hives of robots that run in our warehouse and we have uh, a huge amount of data automation and analysis but we also still have human operatives that give oversight and they are now sort of operating from their from their desks at home their sofas as it were um wow. controlling fleets of thousands of of robots as it were and um you yeah, know that's an area that we really had to think about as this whole uh, crisis took off because we were you know 
reliant on eyes and ears on the ground in those um, oh. those facilities. And so, you know, it, it, it's things like that, which, as I say, will be useful full stop. And it's something we were going to have to do anyway, because as we have 40, 50 of these operations around the world in all these different time zones, we were not realistically going to be sending people to each other's those locations. And so we always knew that we had to get to the point where we had um, you know, sort of central mission control, as it were, and automated more and more, but this has accelerated it. Um, and so I'm pretty proud. I think we have a very agile organization in general, and that things like this, as um, daunting as they may seem, don't phase as much when we, when we get into it. Um, but I think the really cool stuff is then when you see, oh, great, well, not only is that a different way of working, but we can build something new here, a new tool, some new automation um, that allows us to work more effectively in this way, and then realize that, hey, it was a better way of working full stop, regardless of the, the initial catalyst that, that made us develop in that way. Yeah, awesome. It's um, I was recently reading this book called The Adjacent. Um, it's all around the adjacent possible, and it sounds as if that's it's very similar to what you're talking about here. You know, you kick you start off with one innovation, and then that spawns a whole a whole bunch of other or kickstarts a whole bunch of other kind of innovative projects. And it seems like, um, Ocado technology has been really um thriving. Um, in this time in terms of resilience, but also in the very stable technology foundation that you've had that has allowed you to kind of kickstart this 10x innovation in your space. So like I said earlier before, you, you mentioned that you weren't, um, you, weren't seeing the fu- you weren't able to see the future, but I can certainly tell you I feel like myself and the people listening have had a glimpse into the future um, today, talking about robots, um, machine learning, um, process automation, mission control. Um, so, look, this has been very, very interesting. I've learnt a lot. Uh, James, thank you so much uh, for joining us with, uh, for this conversation. So we've had James, the CEO of Ocado Technology. Thank you so much. I've really enjoyed chatting today.